So the first steps are to Hello! So I feel like it's been forever, but it actually hasn't, but it has been because since the last video I have since moved from Scotland down back to England. I'm telling you that, I swear it's relevant, but it's because my sewing room isn't fully unpacked yet and everything is still kind of messy, so please excuse. But today we are going to be tra tackling a new project. Uh, I just, I'm tired of not being sewing and not having something to do all the time. Socially healthy, it's fine. But yeah, so this is actually a project that I decided to do before I moved down and I sort of started gathering all the pieces and planning it before moving and I had to wait until I could unpack to actually find the main component, which is this. This beautiful pattern. So I bought this vintage pattern for a robe or a house coat as they were actually called. I think this is a 1940s, maybe 1950s pattern. And I bought it uh, from an Etsy seller who was really, really nice. Um, really fast shipping, thank you very much. She actually left a little note saying she recognized me. So that's nice. Um, and then, so I actually saw, <sighs> where do I start? <sighs> doing videos and sewing and you know, doing all these things. There's always that in-between state where I'm doing my makeup or I'm getting dressed into historical dress and I don't really have anything for that in-between state, that state of undress as we might call it. And so I thought for a while I wanted to make something that would go for that bit in between. But also something very important that has changed in this move is that, let me show you. So let's say you're asleep, you wake up, you have to pee, it's the middle of the night, it's cold, you want to put on something really quick, so you grab your wonderful 1940s, 1950s house coat, and then you run all the way, and then through here, and then you run and you keep running, you run all the way down the stairs, keep going, you run all the way through the kitchen, until you finally reach the loo. <sighs> See what I mean? So I just feel like in this new house there is like a lot of space in between rooms. I don't know, I just feel like it would be a really useful piece to have. Not even just for wearing around the house, but you know, if I wanted to do like getting dressed videos or whatever. In case you're wondering, I am severely unfit, but also chronically anemic, so <laughs> which is which? Whew. So, I thought house coat would work great. Perfect garment, versatile, should be pretty straightforward to make. And I was also inspired by my friend Nikki. She also has a YouTube channel on here, please check her out, I'll leave in the comments. But she made one, I think a little while ago, that was absolutely stunning and just made it look so glam. And it just, yeah, I hope. I can have one like that too. Now, important things. Vintage patterns. If you have not worked with one before, they are different from modern patterns. I'll mention this maybe a little further on as I'm sewing or if I show you the insides of the pattern. But yeah, and then let's talk about fabric. So this recommends that you get four yards of fabric, um, depending on the width. So I did. I had a real struggle with this because I found the perfect fabric that I wanted to use, which was a cotton and rayon like satin mix kind of thing. Uh, and it was beautiful and it was in this emerald green and I loved it. However, because I was moving, I didn't order it because it would have either gone to my old address or my new address and I couldn't figure out the timing. So I didn't order it. And then by the time I actually moved, it was out of stock. I didn't look at other options. One of the options was uh, cotton velvet or velveteen because that's what Nikki made hers out of and it looked fabulous. And then the other option was, I was really, I find it really hard to source good sateen. It's just very hard. And I found a printed sateen that was kind of nice, but it was a bit more expensive and I didn't love it. You know, I didn't love it. It was a bit bold for me. I usually don't go for very bold patterns. So instead I decided this can be a spring summer one and if I really like it and I find it very useful I can make another one in the cotton velvet from like the colder times of the year. So let me just grab the fabric. Bam! 
So this fabric that I got is a linen and cotton mix and it's a very simple stripe in like a beige kind of way. But I thought it was nice, nice enough anyway. And I think it might produce something really cute. It is very lightweight. Uh, it's a little more lightweight than I expected, I'll be honest. But I think it will work. And now that we have all the technical details out of the way, let's have a look at this pattern. Also, it's the first time it's warm enough for me to wear this dress, which you might recognize from one of my vintage kilo hauls. And I was really excited and I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna film in it. I have to go like grocery shopping later. It'll be really nice. And I felt super cute the whole day, I did my dishes. And then, just as soon as I start to film, I stain it. <laughs> so the pattern. So this brand is called Best Way Pattern. I've never heard of it before. I've never used it before. It gives you a nice cutting diagram, gives you some instructions because vintage patterns do not come with outlines and like printed stuff. They come with perforations. Like the sheet itself will have little holes or little dents or cuts or whatever marks that tell you like, this is the grain, cut on the fold, etc. So you do need these little keys to know that. And I've also never seen an envelope like this. So the way this envelope opens is just like this. Bam. And then printed on the inside are the instructions and these folded sheets are the pattern. So this is a 36 inch bust size. Uh, obviously that'll be an issue because my bust is a 38, so we will need to increase it. What I've done before with uh, vintage patterns that worked quite well is that they're quite proportional um, and as long as you don't have, as long as you figure out your measurements or you don't need anything to be, oh, shh, if you need anything to be super fitted, um, you can just, what I've done before, oh, bah. <sighs> what I've done before is I've just increased it like all the way around by an inch. It might be just what I do here. Uh, I'll just increase it all the way around by half an inch and see, and then measure it. Because <laughs> I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna do a mock-up. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, it's just a robe, like, I don't, uh, it's a loose fitting garment. Don't come for me. Anyway, I'm not gonna do that. So I think what all, all I'm going to do is add half an inch to the side seams all the way across, measure it, make sure it's at least bigger than my measurements and proceed from there. So I'm going to iron these, uh, do the alterations, pin them onto the fabric, do the alterations I told you about, measure everything and then cut it out. Pray for me. I've just finished cutting out all the pieces. I am starting to think that maybe this fabric is a little meh. You know, like it's not, it's not the most interesting fabric, but it's here now, so that's what we're going to do. So I've cut out all the big pieces and I've uh, cut out all the facings and I'm just gonna get started on construction. So I've been thinking a little bit about whether I want to follow the instructions exactly as they are, because I had a quick look and I don't know, Maybe this is just me, but like written instructions just really confuse me. <laughs> Be it modern or old, like they just really confuse me. Mostly they don't make a lot of sense. But this this should be pretty straightforward-ish. So the first steps are to... The first steps are to do the gathering at the front, at the bust and the waist of the front pieces. And then... Join, join the bodice pieces. Uh, so the next step is then to sew the neck extension together, which I think this this image explains a bit better than I can. Look at this. And then you do the darts uh, at the back are stitched, 
something about folding edges. So something I was trying to figure out is how do they finish seams? Because obviously I want mine to be quite sturdy. Originally I had thought I would just sew everything with French seams, but I'm also quite curious to see what a garment done exactly like these instructions, like as they would have been in the 40s and 50s, would look like. So I think I'm not gonna do French seams. I think I'm gonna try and follow the instructions as exactly as I can and we'll see what we end up with. And I did, I only have a tiny bit of fabric left over, like maybe under half a meter, and I bought four meters, so just keep that in mind. If you are doing something like this, it's basically because the um, skirt is so large that it just needs a lot of fabric. So those are the steps I'm gonna go do now. And then, um, and then you do some facings at the front. Let's just get to it. So this bit was a little tricky, so I thought I'd talk you through it. So the way they have you unite the front and the back of the bodice is by doing what is called a lap seam. And that means that instead of sewing the fabric two right sides together and then just opening that seam, you have one finished edge, which is what I was basting earlier, and then you basically top stitch that in. So you end up having the under fabric here and then just a finished seam like this. And so they have you pin uh, the gathers. So th this is the point where you can you can know how much you have to have gather by aligning the notches. And then just across the neck edge and then across the other side. These little bits here were very, very tricky and I'm not convinced they're gonna work very well because what they have you do is cut into the seam allowance. And then this is the bit that's turned under and this bit is turned under. So it's like a weird overlap there. But I'm about to put this into the machine. So let's see if it works. So that happened. Um, I was not too, very convinced. So what I did was I went in over these little corners and I just did like a little whip stitch with thread just to really reinforce that corner. And now I have pinned the side seams and I'm just gonna sew up the side seams. I've also sewn up the back of the facing, the neck facing. And then at some point this is gonna go on here. <laughs> we'll see how. just set in the sleeves and I thought I would show you really quick how they're done. So they do look a little bit more gathered I think than the pattern intended but I'll tell you why. It's because I made the sleeve bigger without making the actual sleeve head bigger which means not most not sleeve head, the armhole, which means there was more to gather at the top than the pattern intended. That's fine, I actually think it looks quite nice. Um, but yeah, so the sleeves First thing you do is do up the side seam, 
then you sew the cuff, or as they call it, the facing, into a loop. Uh, then you sew that to the bottom of the sleeve, right sides facing each other, you turn it into the inside, and then you hand finish it with some herringbone stitch, or catch stitch as they call it. I found that was really nice because there is some hand finishing still left on this pattern. Then the um, you are meant to ease the top of the sleeve in, so that the notches match, and then you just stitch it up by machine. So that's exactly what I did. Um, it looks alright, but of course none of these edges are finished. Now I'm starting to get really anxious because I'm going to have to finish them after everything is finished, which is way worse. But I'm going to stick to what I said I would do, which is to make it exactly as the instructions tell you. So the next thing I need to do is to finish up the sash. Uh, so I had to cut it with a seam at the back because my fabric just wasn't, the fabric I had left wasn't enough. And that's totally fine. So um, the instructions tell me to join the back edges. Uh, which are then turned under and stitched. Wait, what? Oh, okay, so you join the back edges together and then you hem you hem the sash by turning all the corners inwards and stitching it down. Sash is arranged to tie around the waist with right front of house coat lapped over the left so that centers are in line. The base of skirts is turned under and stitched as for front edges. I'm going to have to hem the skirts as well, which is not in the instructions, but it's just a bit too long for me because I'm quite short. So next point of actions, I'm going to finish up the sash, I'm going to hem the robe and then I'm going to show you it all together. Then I'm going to add pockets and possibly finish all the seams. <laughs> been able to find an angle in this room where I can be full length so we're using the mirror so I just wanted to show you what it looks like um, it is a little bit too long I think particularly well where the bias of the skirt has stretched so I'm going to hem it a little bit but not a lot because the picture clearly shows that it's meant to be full length so I'm just going to even out the hem and then hem it with the half a uh, half an inch seam allowance that they provide but I just wanted to show you how cute it looks it's super comfortable super flattering, super swishy. Um, and then I think this is good enough to show you what it would have looked like without any of my modern additions. So I'm going to add two patched on pockets on either side and I'm going to finish all the seams. I'm not sure how yet. I'm going to flat fell whatever I can reach and then <laughs> maybe bind whatever I can't reach. We'll see. I just wanted to show you because I've made patch pockets. Hopefully they were visible. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't like them. <laughs> See, I know I need a pocket because it needs to be practical. But I don't know. I feel like it was really like classy and elegant and like really smooth and flattering before. And now it feels a little old. I don't know. What do you think? Should I sleep on it? Should I do one pocket only, maybe? <sighs> Should I put it on my Instagram stories and find out?
and that is it. Thank you everyone for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, a comment, whatever. And I hope you enjoyed this project. It was really quick and easy. I highly recommend it if you want like a, a sewing project to get you back into the sewing groove or just a useful item to have around the house. I found the vintage pattern to be very straightforward, very easy to use, and also very forgiving in terms of fit, of course, because it is a row. And I liked it so much, I'm already planning a winter version, so I think I will be going back to that cotton velvet idea, but for winter. And yeah, I will see you all next week.